Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's topic is the third Cordad surface-to-air missile system, which, besides the low-end rod system, constitutes the high-end component of the IRGC Aerospace Force Air Defense backbone. When first revealed in 2012, the third Cordad system was so ambitious, given Iran's industrial capabilities of the time, that many doubted its feasibility. The history of the third Cordad traces its roots back to the unique Rod Air Defense System. The Rod's nucleus was the obscure Beit ol Mogadis project, believed to have resulted in the Sayyad II conventional air defense system and the Rod asymmetric air defense. Thus, when the first third Cordad type vehicles appeared in 2012, they were still called Rod. At that time, the vehicles had a somewhat futuristic appearance, with the cabin mounted in front of the axle rather than above it. This design solved the center of gravity and stability issues caused by the three missiles and their launcher mechanism mounted on top of the truck. The three-axle truck was a well-proven foreign commercial chassis, off-road capable and highly reliable. When the system appeared, it seemed to be just an off-road capable launcher added to the Rod SAM system. Interestingly, the third Cordad vehicles, Tell and Teller, are armored with bulletproof glass and cabins protected against shrapnel. TEL stands for Transporter Erector Launcher, and TELLER for Transporter Erector Launcher and Radar. This requirement likely stems from the ROD days, where operating very close to the front line was deemed essential. The early third Cordad variant mounted three Tier 2A surface-to-air missiles on each vehicle. It is believed that the Tier 1 referred to upgraded missiles of the SA-6 Cube system, and the Tier 2 was an IRGC Aerospace Force Self-Sufficiency Jihad Organization project to create its own medium-range surface-to-air missile. By the late 2000s, the Defense Ministry had mastered the Sayyad II surface-to-air missile technology, based on the US-made standard Missile 1, RIM-66. This success and the development of its solid propellant rocket motor provided the Aerospace Force with the necessary subsystems and components to create the Tier II. The critical enabler was the solid propellant rocket motor, believed to be identical to that of the Sayyad II. The key difference between the Tyre II and the Sayyad II is believed to be the technology input from the Soviet Buk and Kub systems, particularly in terms of system layout and seekers. There are rumors that Iran acquired a Buk M1 system via a third country and used its technology for both the third Kordad and its related system, the Tabas surface-to-air missile system. The lower-end Tabas was a more feasible system than the third Kordad initially proved to be. The Tabas is essentially a wheeled chassis variant of the Buk M1 with solid-state technology, using the more potent Tier II missile instead of the shorter-range Soviet-designed missiles. The inverse cascade radar antenna design of the Tabas, with its solid-state transmitters, was within Iran's capabilities at the time. However, Tabas is a topic on its own, discussed separately. Compared to the Tabas, the goals for the third Kordad system were far more ambitious. The aim was to develop a radar system with an electronically steered array, similar to the Russian Buk M2 and M3 systems, but even more advanced in its radar design. Instead of using a passive electronically steered array, PSA, the third Cordad was designed to use an active electronically steered array, AESA, operating in the difficult-to-master X-band, manufacturing X-band transceiver modules of sufficient power in the high quantities necessary to equip the array with many hundreds of modules, meant that the first public photos of the third Cordad radar system appeared only two years later, in 2014. The initial production variant for testing the third Cordad and its operational trials was crude compared to the final production variant, which appeared in 2016. The final variant also featured a new missile, the Tire 2B. This missile can be distinguished from the A variant by its uniform diameter and is known to possess a new seeker, moving away from the Cub and Buk M1 origin seeker antenna designs to more modern planar slotted arrays. The larger size of the new seeker also enhanced the performance of the semi-active radar homing guidance system used by the third Cordad. The Tier 2B missile was designed to be the native missile interceptor for the third Cordad surface-to-air missile system, but it was also compatible with the less potent Tier 2A and the Sayad 2 and Sayad 3 missiles produced by the Defense Ministry. This compatibility was a crucial feature to ensure a sufficient missile supply in the event of a serious conflict. The initial range of the Tier 2B was claimed to be 75 kilometers, 
surpassing the range of the missile used by the Russian Buk M2 system. In an engagement scenario, a third Kordad Teller vehicle would electronically scan a sector with its ASA radar. If necessary, it would rotate its turret towards another sector, align the three missiles in elevation, and launch. The AESA radar's design allows it to operate in a low probability of intercept mode to decrease risk of detection. The first phase of the missile's flight is controlled by its inertial measurement unit, which is updated via a low-power missile uplink mounted on top of the third Kordad radar. When the missile reaches a certain range, beyond the reach of this low-power data link system, it starts receiving mid-course updates from the main multifunctional AESA array of the third Kordad. As the missile gets close enough to the target, via its inertial measurement system, it initiates the end game phase. During this phase, the semi-active radar seeker locks onto the target, which is illuminated by the third Kordad's radar array from the ground, and hits the target. This lock-on after-launch technique happens in the final seconds of the engagement, providing minimal warning time for the targeted adversary aircraft, thereby reducing the chance of countermeasures and evasive maneuvers. The third Kordad system can operate autonomously in emergencies, capable of both volume searching a sector electronically and performing engagements. This survivable and continuous standalone operation capability may be regarded the key feature of the system. Additionally, it can integrate with upper echelon data, such as that from the integrated air defense system, to activate only when the target is within the engagement envelope, reducing the risk of radar emission detection during volume search mode. Standard practice, however, is to operate within a battery structure, with four third Kordad Teller vehicles covering four sectors, and additional TELS launch vehicles without radars providing additional magazine depth. A S-band Bashir radar mounted on a mast performs continuous volume search for the battery to avoid Teller vehicles emitting radar signals. This setup marked a departure from the previous IRGC Aerospace Force doctrine, which emphasized maximum passiveness, maximum concealment, and low footprint to increase survivability against an adversary like the United States. While a single third Kordad TL can be easily concealed and disguised as a civilian vehicle, its nominal operation in a large battery structure with its relatively expensive ASA radar solution indicated a new step for the IRGC Aerospace Force. This step showed confidence in their capability to provide continuous and reliable defense of specific areas, rather than relying on ambushes. Consequently, the third Kordad represents the high-end component of the Aerospace Force's air defense in the category of tactical, highly mobile systems. By the late 2010s, the third Kordad had reached widespread service and volume production, with the next goal becoming the addition of new capabilities. In 2019, the Ninth Day missile was unveiled, later becoming the short-range missile component for the third Kordad surface-to-air missile family. This system is discussed in a separate topic, due to its complexity. The next crucial capability was to develop a robust engagement capability against low observable and very low observable targets, such as the United States F-35 fighter jet. The third Kordad operates in the X-band to employ cost-efficient, semi-active radar-guided missiles. However, the X-band is where stealth techniques, including shaping and radar-absorbing materials and structures, are most effective. Thus, operating in this band is not ideal for engaging low and very low observable objects. To address this issue, a long-range thermal imaging camera was added to the third Kordad. This addition allows for long-range identification and rejection of jamming and decoys like MALD. When informed by upper echelon assets like the Bashir S-band volume search radar of an approaching low observable object, the thermal camera can be used for angular tracking of the target. Knowing the target's location and updating the Tier 2 bs inertial guidance system, the missile can, at a late point, eventually lock onto the reflected energy from the third Kordad ESA radar and neutralize the target. To enhance the kinematic capability, the improved Tier 2 c was developed by 2017, with a maximum range of 105 km. Another variant developed to reduce reliance on radar energy, and its reflection, is the Tier 2 command variant, using the Tier 2 c as basis. This Tier 2 command variant makes use of the high-resolution X-band guidance for course navigation to the target area, and then uses a terminal imaging infrared seeker to lock onto low observable targets in the well-detectable infrared spectrum. This solution effectively addresses the challenges of operating in the X-band against stealth targets. 
the AESO radar enabled this command infrared seeker version by functioning as a multi-role array to establish an uplink and downlink with the Tear 2C variant. This integration introduces a potential man-in-the-loop capability for the Tear 2 command variant. Combined with the long-range thermal camera on the third Cordad Teller, the system can engage very low observable targets exclusively using the infrared spectrum, bypassing radar for tracking and illumination. This means a near-passive engagement under strict emission control becomes possible with the Tear 2 command missile, which is of greatest importance for survivability. Consequently, the Tear 2 command variant of the third Cordad system effectively counters adversary threats like the F-35 and low observables. Although reliant on external early warning, Iran's integrated air defense system's mobile low-band VHF radars are ideal for providing such early warning. The COD's VHF band radar is believed to complement the S-band Bashir volume search radar in the third Cordad battery structure, with the VHF band radar improving the standoff detection range of very low observable aircraft and targets. It enables the effective use of the Tier 2 command variant inside the battery without upper echelon integrated air defense system support. In such operation, the COD VHF band radar offers a unique capability due to its near shoot and scoot mobility performance of just 10 minutes for setup or departure. The command variant also has the capability to engage targets such as subsonic terrain masking land attack cruise missiles. The man in the loop feature allows locking onto targets from above, even when the direct line of sight to the teller vehicle's radar is obstructed by terrain. In 2022, another missile variant, the Tear 3, was introduced, with a range of 200 km. This long-range surface-to-air missile component for the 3rd Cordad SAM system was developed to enable batteries to engage supporting aircraft such as tankers, jammers, and reconnaissance assets like hail drones, as well as airborne early warning aircraft. This category of low maneuverability targets can be engaged by the larger Tear 3 SAM, which is likely equipped with an additional home on jam capability, believed to have been integrated into the Tear family from early on. In summary, the missile components of the third corded system include the Tear 2B and Tear 3C both semi-active guided missiles serving as the primary weapons. There is a likelihood of an active radar homing missile, potentially a variant of the Tear 2 or the active radar seeker variants of the Sayad 2 and Sayad 3 SAMs, covering the medium range component of the system. The canister launched 9th day missiles provide the 3rd Cordad systems with short range weapons, offering a range of 20 to 25 kilometers. These can be loaded with six missiles instead of the standard three to counter saturation attacks and cost-effectively protect the system itself. For engaging stealth and very low observable targets, the command and infrared seeker guided Tear 2 command variant is the weapon of choice. To counter adversary reconnaissance assets, early warning aircraft, tankers, and standoff jammers, the long-range Tear 3 missile can be utilized. The survivability of the third Cordat is high, being an off-road capable shoot-and-scoot SAM system that can prepare for launch in less than three minutes. It employs its AESA radar for emission control, lowered peak radio frequency power levels, and low probability of intercept. The survivability of the third Cordad is enhanced by its ability to be spaced far apart from each other, with each battery component having a unified data link to connect, while avoiding the visual detection of the entire battery. The system can handle saturation attacks with its capability to simultaneously engage four targets per Teeler vehicle, and cannot be defeated by higher altitude flight due to its 27km maximum altitude reach. A review of the missile ranges of the third Cordad system illustrates the program's ambition. While the ROD system used the SA-6 Cub missile had a range of about 25km, this was improved in the Tear 2 a of the Taba system to 50km, matching the range of the Russian Buk M2 missile. The initial variants of the third Cordad, with the Tear 2 b could reach 75 km, and by 2017, the Tear 2 c with a range of 105 km against low kinematic capacity targets was put into service. In 2020, the Tear 2 c with an estimated maximum range of 80 km, was introduced to counter difficult targets, such as stealth and very low observable aircraft. In 2022, the Tear 3 with a 200 km range against kinematically low capacity targets was introduced to be mounted on the TEL launcher vehicles of the 3rd Cordad system. The various 9th day missiles, with ranges from 10 km to 25 km, equipped the battery structure with self-defense missiles 
and allow for cost-efficient countercruise missile capabilities. The third Cordad also maintains a traditional aerospace force emphasis on cost efficiency. Volume production of the transceiver modules is believed to have significantly reduced costs. The system's chassis is commercially available, avoiding low volume production of specialized chassis. The command missile variants of the ninth day also help reduce the costs of the third Cordad. This evolution underscores the importance of the 3rd Cordad to the Aerospace Force Air Defense Division in its counter-air breathing target role. Interestingly, the 3rd Cordad is also a combat-proven SAM system, having shot down the United States Air Force's RQ-4 Global Hawk in 2019. This advanced high-flying, low-observable hail drone allegedly briefly entered Iranian airspace and was successfully shot down. Recently, the remains of Tear 2C missiles have been discovered in Yemen, and considering the downing of US MQ-9 Reapers during the same period, the third Cordad, or more likely its missile components, might have achieved unpublished successes in recent combat. With the introduction of the Mehran long-range SAM system, based on the third Cordad, it is believed that it will supplement existing third Cordad units, extending their reach beyond 300 km. The Mehran system is discussed in a separate topic due to its importance. The further development and wider use of the third Cordad will ensure that it remains the high-end backbone of the IRGC Aerospace Force's counter-air power assets. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiasts can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.